Physicists are nearing a breakthrough that could prove the existence of God, a study that might unsettle even the skeptics. You may have heard that our universe is not the only one, there are others. A recent scientific paper rigorously proves the existence of an infinite number of other universes. This is exciting news and it suggests that we won't run out of worlds to explore. However, there's a catch. Our world, with its green grass and blue skies, seems to be missing. It appears that only a divine acknowledgement can rectify this, and physicists seem to be on the verge of such a discovery. The article titled Search for Classical Systems in Quantum Worlds is authored by physicists from Caltech, Los Alamos, and Swiss Institute of Technology. It seeks to address the profound question, why does our world exist? From our perspective, the world simply exists. We perceive it through our eyes, but whether our vision conveys the full truth is debatable. Our modern civilization with its computers Cellular communication and social media relies heavily on the principles of quantum mechanics. This science is often considered strange, suggesting possibilities like walking through walls, the non-existence of time, and the disappearance of nature we, uh, when unobserved. Despite its oddities, quantum mechanics is far from being nonsensical, as evidenced by its application in countless devices and yet we remain unable to walk through walls or traverse time. We inhabit the world termed classical by quantum mechanics, which does not emerge from its equations. There is no room for it. Conversely, the classical world is precisely depicted by Einstein's theory of relativity and Newton's laws. However, the issue arises because the theory of relativity and quantum mechanics exclude each other. It could it perhaps be the theory of relativity? For instance, the GPS system would not be feasible without the relativistic or Einsteinian effects, thus the choice is necessitated. There is no peace as long as we are not. Physicists made this choice, indeed these particularities, peculiarities we recognize as early as the 1930s, necessitating a response. Thus, the notion of global collapse emerges. The world exists as probabilities rather than material objects. However, these probabilities eventually collapse, trimming the excesses, leaving us with familiar entities like chairs, tables, the sun, the grass, rather than mere probabilities of their existence. An observer is required for this collapse to happen. In the presence of an observer, probabilities retreat much like a turtle withdrawing into its shell, leaving behind a tangible reality for interaction. The question then arises, who is the observer? It includes us, hence the adage, the moon does not exist unless someone observes it, but it extends beyond humans to animals, and given that Mars exists without them, possibly inanimate objects as well, it seems that a stone can observe another stone, a grain of sand, another grain. Frankly, this seems like nonsense. The pinnacle of the bewilderment occurred in 2019, when a team of earnest scientists experimentally demonstrated that individual photons can act as observers. This underscores a notion of searching where the light is brightest, implying that in darkness nothing exists. It's conceivable that if the observer encompasses all that exists, then the origin of the observer itself becomes a mystery. Presumably, there must be another entity observing it, higher order observers, perhaps. The 2019 article posits that there is no underlying reality and no global collapse. Our experiments are merely perceptions, in essence, a matrix two scenario. Should we posit the existence of an observer, an absolute observer, identified as God? The enigma resolves itself. However, scientists will persist in their inquiries, avoiding this hypothesis at all cost. The Andromeda Nebula Hypothesis? The recent article presents a fresh perspective on the weighty concept, offering away a different viewpoint. 
In the 1950s, physicist Hugh Everett proposed that the universe is not singular, suggesting a way out of the theoretical deadlock. According to him, multiple parallel universes exist. David Deutsch, known for his work on quantum computers, expanded on the idea suggesting that our decision, our decisions cause us to shift between phase these parallel worlds. For instance, deciding whether to purchase ice cream on the way to work results in different outcomes in different universes, based on the choice made. Recently, it's been established that the brain functions similarly to a quantum computer, which aligns well with these theories. The multiverse theory, or the concept of multiple universes, has gained popularity partly because it addresses a free will paradox. Even Isaac Newton recognized in his laws this, that his laws seem to negate free will, implying predestination. However, the multiverse theory suggests that free will exists and that our choices matter, resolving a long-standing philosophical dilemma for the first time in centuries. Yet the sums still do not reconcile. In a recent study, physicists posted, posed a provocative question. If an observer sits in New York can he conjure the Andromeda Nebula merely by contemplating it? Surprisingly, quantum mechanics equations suggest it is possible, just as thought might be enough to manifest it. This leads to the nebulae beyond, to the very brink of existence. The researchers arrived at two conclusions, one indisputable, the other contentious. Firstly, the number of universes equals the number of observers, essentially an infinite count. This concept has unanimous support among physicists. And secondly, the notion of a one-for-all world, a real reality, is non-existent. Instead, there's a boundless collection of individual universes, not only Uncle Borea, but every Earth inhabitant, every animal, down to the insects, and even photons, which are also considered observers, play a part in this. With each light bulb emitting billions of photons every second, the numbers are truly infinite, and this point, however, is up for debate. In essence, Caltech and Los Alamos ex experts sought a foothold in reality, a way to derive a, the classical form uh, from the quantum, and it appears they have found such a place. Nothing new? This may appear to be a modern absurdity, but if it's absurd, it has ancient roots. Indeed, the concept of multiple realities began to take shape among scientists in the latter half of the 19th century, long before the advent of relativity theory or quantum mechanics. Leading this exploration were psychologists who recognized that each person has their own unique experience. We cannot transplant our experiences into someone else. We concur that an apple is red, yet it's conceivable that we perceive as red, as what we perceive as red could be blue to others. These inquiries all converge on an amateur scientist and military pilot, John Dunn, who significantly influenced 20th century art, though regrettably not science, where the self-taught individual's constructions were not immediately recognized. Having empirically established that our dreams intertwine past and future, Dunn proposed that consciousness moves freely through time, akin to a ruler. It's observed by a higher order consciousness, the fifth dimension, then by a consciousness from the sixth dimension and so on, culminating in infinity as discussed in the new article, right? Not exactly. Rather, it culminates in God, who is the absolute observer and the embodiment of absolute time. Dunn was a believer in God, unlike many physicists today. However, physicists now more than ever have the opportunity to prove his existence, God, the, the existence of God, that is. After all, in mathematical terms, God is the limit of an infinite function, a concept familiar to mathematicians from their first year of study. One must concede that introducing the initial or absolute observer 
alters the scenario, rendering it far from mundane. Perhaps our world is an illusion, yet one woven into a larger system whose inception is marked by the creator. It's a captivating notion. Whether it's scientific depends on the author of this a subsequent article. Indeed, another researcher, there are numerous believers among other researchers. And this is on Solask. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. I highly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.